welfare in a market. We can use our model of the market to analyze how much welfare is created. That is to say, what is the value of the wealth that is created by the existence of a market? And being able to visualize the amount of wealth created by a market is going to allow us to analyze what is the effect of various actions on people's welfare. Here is our demand and supply or model of the market. We are going to use this model of the market to do welfare analysis. And by way of introduction, I'm going to introduce you to a clip from an old movie starring Richard Gere and Julia Roberts, a movie from 1991 called Pretty Woman. In the segment we're about to see, Edward is a wealthy financier. The night before, he has picked up a sex worker and the following morning, he now has to negotiate with her because he decides he wants her to stay for the week. Let's have a look and listen. Sunday, I'd like you to spend a week with me. Yes. Yes, I'd like to hire you as an employee. Would you consider spending a week with me? <laughs> I will pay you to be at my beck and call. Look, I'd love to be your beck and call girl, but um, you're a rich, good looking guy. You could get a million girls free. I want a professional. Don't get any romantic hassles this week. If you're talking 24 hours a day, it's going to cost you. Oh, yes, of course. All right, here we go. Give me a ballpark figure. How much? Six full nights, days to 4,000. Six nights at 300 is 1,800. You want days too? 2,000. 3,000. Done. Holy shit! <laughs> Vivian? Vivian, is that a yes? Yes. <laughs> I'll be gone most of the day. I want to buy some clothes. We really should think about travelers, James. We may be going out evenings. We need something to wear. Like what? Nothing too flashy. Sexy. Conservative. Boring. Elegant. Any questions? Can I call you Eddie? I'd be expecting an answer. I would have stayed for 2000 I would pay for it. I'll see you tonight. Baby, I'm going to treat you so nice. You're never going to want to let me go. 3000 Six days. And Vivian, I will let you go. I'm here now. $3,000! So 
So the question that I would like to ask is why did she throw herself on the bed and stomp around with such happiness? You know, I, I went out and bought some lunch earlier. And when I paid for my lunch box, the, the, the vendor did not drop on the ground and flail her feet and go, you know, $300 with any excitement. So a sale doesn't normally result in that kind of exuberance. What was Vivian so happy about? It's on the screen. She was happy about the producer surplus. The difference between the amount received from selling a product and the seller's reservation price. The reservation price is the smallest amount that he or she would have been willing to part with the product for. The absolute, the reservation price below which she wouldn't sell. And we know how much it is. She said she would have done it for 2000 but she's getting 3000 So what she is excited about is not the 3000 it's that extra 1000 It's the producer surplus. I want to model the producer surplus. And let us use a market where we are selling discrete single products. You can use the same market if you want. So here we have the, the possible suppliers in this market. We have four of them demonstrated on this diagram. And their willingness to supply the same product, the same service, and the reservation price of each of them. The first supplier is willing to provide the service for $10 second one for twenty dollars the third one for forty the fourth one for fifty well on a particular friday night the going rate in this corner of the world is fifty dollars the height of the supply curve is the value of the service to the supplier the reservation price at which she is willing he or she is willing to sell it so if that seller gets fifty dollars for a service she would have been willing to supply for ten at the lowest then the producer surplus for that provider is forty dollars the difference between the reservation price and what, let us say, she, for the sake of simplicity, actually gets paid. So that's $40 of producer surplus. If the second service provider makes a sale, then the producer surplus is not $40 like in the case of the first seller, it's $30 because her reservation price is 20 difference between 50 and 20 is 30. When the third service provider makes a sale, her producer surplus is $10. So we can see how much is the producer surplus for each seller. And if we aggregate across all of the sellers, we see that the total producer surplus in the market is the area between price and the supply curve. In the case of a market with a large number of suppliers and therefore a smooth supply curve, that conclusion still holds. The producer surplus is the area between price and the supply curve. So this tells us how much welfare accrues to the sellers in a market. This is the wealth created 
that accrues to the sellers. Corresponding concept of producer surplus is a related concept called consumer surplus. It is the difference between the degree of satisfaction from consuming a product and the amount actually paid. The degree of satisfaction from consuming it is the amount that you would be willing to pay. The height of the demand curve reflects what the product or service is worth to the consumer. They'd be willing to pay up to that amount, but no more. So using the same market, the first customer, buyer, is willing to pay $90 for the service. That is what he figures it is worth to him. When he arrives at that marketplace and realizes that he can actually get it for $50, then he enjoys $40 of consumer surplus. He gets for $50 a service that is worth $90 to him. Another consumer who is not quite so um, desperate, it is worth only $70 to him. He gets it for 50, just $20 of consumer surplus. And for the third customer, $10 of consumer surplus. Once again, we see that the total consumer surplus in the market is the entire area between price and the height of the demand curve. In a market with a large number of products being sold, and therefore we get a smooth demand curve, we see that that conclusion holds, that we can visualize the consumer surplus created in the market as the entire area below the demand curve and above price. So market transactions create both producer surplus and consumer surplus. And the total surplus, the total welfare created in a market is the area between the demand curve and the supply curve. That is the value of the wealth that derives from the existence of this market. And this welfare analysis allows us to explain why the equilibrium price is such an important price. Let us take this transaction by transaction. The first customer gets a service that is worth $90 to him. from a supplier to whom it is worth only $10. So that entire difference, $90 minus $10, is the total welfare created. The value of the product to the buyer is greater than the value of the product to the seller. How they split that, that difference between value and cost is not relevant to the total welfare created. The fact is, once the demand curve, the height of the demand curve is above the height of the supply curve, that vertical distance reflects the amount of welfare created. The first transaction creates that welfare. Second transaction creates welfare. Value is greater than cost. The third transaction creates that welfare. Let us look hypothetically, at a fourth exchange were it to take place. A customer comes along, whom the value of the service is less than the reservation price of the supplier. No deal can be struck here. The customer is willing to pay $38. The supplier thinks that it's worth $63 to supply it 
And so it's not worth it to her to accept less than $63. It's not worth it to the buyer to pay more than 38. Were that transaction to actually take place, it would destroy value. It's worth less than to the user than it is to the supplier. So that transaction ought to take place. It, it subtracts from market welfare. All the transactions up to that point add to market welfare. Which is the price that will allow all the welfare creating transactions to take place, but no more? That price is the market clearing price. At that price, all the transactions that are valued more than they cost, all the welfare creating transactions occur. And no transactions that are valued less than they cost to supply. So the equilibrium price is the price that allows the greatest welfare to be created in a market. All of the value creating transactions take place. None of the value destroying transactions do. The equilibrium price and quantity is optimal, is welfare optimal. It creates the most welfare. I will say parenthetically that this implies a whole lot of assumptions that may or may not exist, but we will get to those in another unit. For now, the equilibrium quantity and price creates the most welfare. Our takeaway is that the area between the demand and supply curves up to the quantity traded represents the welfare created by a market.